How you guys doing today? My name is Jerry the Snake Man and this is episode 94 of Snake Clips. Today we're just going to be talking about rattlesnakes. This is actually going to be a pretty short clip compared to most of mine. Um, I found some really cool tails and I found some uh, teeth that I thought you might want to look at. Um, so I figured I would uh, take out my uh, albino western diamond back, show you a few little things on him, a few unique features, and show you the tails and the fangs. So I hope you guys enjoy this short video clip. If you do, hit the like button. Um, we love it when you share them with your friends. Um, if you want to see more of what we do, hit the subscribe button, please. And uh, as we say here all the time, we're just keeping it real. Whatever it is, that's the way it is. We're not trying to phony it up for you in any way, shape, or form. So have a wonderful day, guys. All right. We're s today is our episode is strictly on uh, rattlesnakes. And uh, basically, we're just going to show you some different things on rattlesnakes that you might not have seen before. Um, the reason I'm choosing to use my albino rattlesnake is for two purposes. Uh, number one, he went to the bathroom, smeared it all over the front of his glass. So I want to clean him out. And number two, I love albino rattlesnakes. So again, he's over here. Hopefully, you can see him on camera. What we're going to do is we're going to try to hook two parts of his body at first. See if we can get him up. Usually if you can get two parts of a snake's body hooked, rattlesnake, they'll come up. As you can see, he's not going to let us do that. So what we're going to do is then I'm going to hook him and I'm going to get part of his body up here and then kind of pull him back and then slowly pull the rest of him up into my hand just like this. And as you can see, he's not fighting me or anything. And then we're going to put him in a temporary holding container over here while I clean this tank. And then I'm going to start working on uh, the video for you. And I'm going to show you the different parts of a rattlesnake. So as soon as I get this cleaned up, I'll be right back and uh, we'll, we'll get working on the video for you. All right, normally you'd never see me holding a venomous snake behind the head. Uh, I'm only doing it right now to show you different things, plus I have these gloves on. If I didn't have the gloves on, there's no way that I'd be doing this. So what I'm going to show you here is, uh, if you notice, hopefully all this is coming up clear. Uh, with a rattlesnake, he has the cat eyes. Um, he's more active at night because where he's normally from it's extremely hot during the daytime so he pretty much hides. They have nostrils which are these holes right here. Um, this is his nose. These holes here are actually pits. That's why they're called pit vipers. They use these, hit, these pits to sense heat. So they hunt their prey actually by the body heat that the prey provides. On the back here we have where the venom glands are on this snake which is why it has a triangular shaped head. And if we can get him to open his mouth here, I like to use a kitchen spatula for this. We'll get him to open his mouth. Here we go. And we're going to show you a couple things here, hopefully. Uh, on the bottom here, which I can't point out, if hopefully he's got his mouth open wide enough here. <clears throat> Let me get the spatula in there a little bit more. And try this once again. Come on, bud, you want to cooperate? Get this opened up some more. The bottom of his mouth, which you can't see because he's not opening up. He has what's called a glottis, which is actually the windpipe, which extends out of his mouth when he's got his prey full of food. He's not opening his mouth wide enough, though, to show it to us. Uh, let's see if we can get him to get his fangs out here for us. I'm going to show you his, there's one. Can we get the other one up here, buddy? Come on. One more. Come on. We got one fang. He's trying to get that second fang to come up. Come on. Not cooperating too much. He is showing you the one fang there, though, pretty well. Let me see if we can get the other one. See that fang there? That's his one fang. It's covered with skin. Um, that skin will push back 
Uh, with the fang, no. The fang is actually hollow, which I will be able to show you really good. I have one of the fangs that has come from another snake. Um, but that fang is hollow, so when he pushes on those venom glands, the venom will push through a tube from the gland through the tooth. And now you can see that fang right there. Push the skin back a little bit. Through the tooth, and the tip of that tooth also is hollow, and he will inject that like a, uh, like a syringe. Um, he will sink that fang into you, that you can see right there, and then he will push on his glands and he will cause venom to go through the tube and then go through the tooth. Alright, I'm going to move him forward just a slight bit, not too much. Uh, we want to show you down here, now he's rattling for us, which is excellent. That's the next spot we wanted to go to. Um, his rattle is actually um, loose skin. As he sheds, it forms one more segment of the rattle, and as you can see, he will move it violently, very quickly, and it will make that rattling noise. And we got some rattles to show you as well. On the bottom here is one more thing I wanted to show you. Try not to get bit. Is here is an odd-shaped scale, and that odd-shaped scale is actually where the, where the cloaca is which is the opening for reproduction and where they go to the bathroom. Um, when this, uh, when he, if he can't bite you, he can actually musk you with a musk from that gland. Um, and from that gland down, that's considered his tail. And again, rattlesnakes have this rattle on the end of their tail. And we're going to show you a few rattles that we have um, collected over the years. So let me put him back right now. Uh, one more thing I want to point out before I put him back, though, is his scales here. His scales are rather rough and dry, and that's because where he comes from, uh, most of the desert type of uh, snakes are going to have that rough, dry scale feeling. So we're going to go put him back in his enclosure right now. Okay, now that he's back in his enclosure, you can see I've made him mad. And see how he's uh, S lifted his front part of his body up, s up, rattling his tail? That means he's ready to strike. And he is going to be very defensive right now, so if you tried to go anywhere near him, he would definitely nail you. Rattlesnakes can strike mostly in any direction. Um, he could strike sideways, he could strike backwards if he wanted to. So you wouldn't want to get too close to him. He's able to strike two-thirds of his body length, so say he's approximately, he's a little over three feet, but let's say he is three feet, he would be able to strike a good um, two feet with no problem. Typically, they like to take shorter strikes, so this way they're not vulnerable to a prey counterattacking them. You see that little yawn that he just did there? That's because he's realigning his jaw because I was forcing his mouth open. Now, I wouldn't normally do what I did by holding him behind the head. I definitely wouldn't do it with no gloves on. But with the gloves on, I feel a little safer. But normally, I wouldn't even do that. That just makes the snake mad when you restrain them like that. Um, so I wouldn't do that. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some, uh, some tails that came off. And I'm going to get a couple of um, teeth. And hopefully, we can get enough close-ups to really, really show you up close about their tails and their teeth. So just stay tuned. Okay, now I'm going to show you um, what we have here. Here is a rattlesnake's rattle, and each segment that you see here is um, is uh, equals one shed. Every time a rattlesnake sheds its tail, it gets one more segment onto its rattle, and they say about seven rattles is about the loudest rattle that um, you can possibly get. Now, if you look very closely at this rattle, though, um, look at the tip. The tip of this tail still has what's called a button. And a button is what a baby rattlesnake has when he's born. So he doesn't have any rattles, just one button. And that button is uniquely shaped. So I know that this tail broke off of a, a much younger snake. Um, so here we see a, the, the button. It's shaped different than all the rest of the rattles. And again, as it grows, it gets one more, one, as time it grows and it sheds, it gets one more segment. So basically, this doesn't tell me anything about the age of the snake. 
Some people believe that every year a snake gets a new segment. That's not true. Now, if you look at this rattle, you can see that the end of the, the tip here is quite different shape than this one. You see, this rattle here has been broken off as part, part of the segments here. Okay, so you can see the uniqueness of the shape of that compared to the button that you would find on a normal one. So this kit probably came off a much older rattlesnake where his tail has been broken off quite a few times. Their tails are very delicate and thin, so out in the wild they tend to um, break off quite often, but in captivity they can grow very, very long. Now I want to show you the teeth, and hopefully you can see this because this is what I find very awesome. Um, again, notice the size of these teeth. They're not that small. Because they're um, pit vipers and also true vipers, their teeth are actually hinged so they fold up into their mouth so they can be a lot longer. Um, this, this here would actually extend out of the snake's mouth, which you're going to see in the video when the snake yawns. Um, this would extend out of his mouth but when he would retract it, it would fold right back up into his mouth like you saw when I tried to get the snake to open up and show us his fangs. Now if you look closely, I'm going to turn it this way. Again, hopefully you guys can really see this because this is awesome. The top of the tooth is a hole in it. It's hollow. And if then you look at the front of the tooth here on the bottom, and this is what I don't know if you can see. I'm going to try to bring it up and hopefully it won't blur it out. Look very closely right in this area right here, and you'll see that there's a hole. And this tooth is actually hollow. So when he jabs this into you, and he squeezes on those uh, venom glands, that the venom will go through the hole on the top, through this tooth, and actually squirt into your hand. Now, one of these teeth I've actually pulled out of my hand. And I say that, though, but not because I got bit by it, because um, they also shed their teeth. And when they shed their teeth, a lot of times you'll find a rattlesnake will have actually two sets of fangs, one um, growing right behind the first set. And this way, when this breaks off, um, he'll have a second set right there. So he actually shed some of his fangs sometimes as well. And what happens is, if you're not careful, you'll find these, which won't, won't hurt you except for being stuck. We'll find these in the bedding. So if you reach in the bedding and you go to pick it up, um, I've been jabbed a couple times by a, a fang that's been shed. You see, if a, a rattlesnake breaks off his, his um, tooth, his fang here, um, without having another fang to replace it right away, he won't be able to get food. So that's why it's very important that a rattlesnake um, rejuvenates their fangs their entire life. And if they do break off, and normally they have a set that's already starting to grow behind the first set, um, so he won't be long without uh, having the ability to capture prey.